New friends, thanks for uh, for connecting. Uh, so my session is going to be a very uh, informal session. Um, I think, uh, especially for those of you who are maybe located in the in the U.S. continent or or Asia, uh, I thought it could have been interesting to have a little perspective and uh, some firsthand uh, insights um from you know for what concerns the Italian situation and uh, um moreover the the european situation uh what what has been happening in the last two months or so um and um i guess i'm going to be using uh, a lot of numbers because uh numbers are helpful for sure um but uh, as mentioned, it's it's a dialogue, so feel free to jump in and uh, you know interrupt me at any time uh, with with uh, questions. Um, so brief introduction. I am called. My name is Valfredo de la Gardesca. Uh, I'm one second. I'm going to be setting my my Instagram live too. So I'm. Um, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, an investor in uh, in the European ecosystem, mostly Italy and Switzerland. Um, and um, I I'm a friend of Michael, and um, you know I'm very thankful for this uh, awesome uh, thing he organized. I think it's a great chance to 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 learn a lot of stuff. And um, let me see if this is working. Yeah, so uh, basically I'm gonna go through, you know, four main points. Uh, firstly, I would like to do a brief historic reconstruction of what has happened uh, in Italy and Europe in the last two months. Then I would like to go through the main um, government measures that are being implemented uh, in this moment to, uh, of course, to, to face the situation. Uh, and then uh, I would like to just give a, my personal opinion on the current economic situation and you know projections for what might happen in the next months or years. Uh, and finally, just a, a personal, my personal experience on the business side. I think it can be interesting, but you know, it's just also to try and finish with a more positive, uh, uh, you know, point of view because uh, because you know what i'm going to tell you is not particularly positive um so basically you know what we know now is that um the genetic trail uh, of the virus that we've had in in italy and in most of europe is traced back to uh germany uh what has been discovered is that uh, around the 40 to the 24th uh, 25th of of January, um, there there was a company called Webasto in Munich, Germany, that was having uh, um, you know business meetings or or, or uh, conferences with with Asian uh, employees, Chinese employees, and apparently you know a group of these uh, individuals were carrying the virus. Um, and within this, this group, there was some German employees, uh, one in particular that, uh, sh shortly after the meeting, uh, went to Italy for, um, in a, in an area called Lodigiano, which is an industrial area outside of Milan for, for business, I suppose. Uh, and that's where we, that's where it all started, you know? Um, it has been in Italy. What happened is we, at some point, discovered a pretty relevant outbreak in a town called Codogno, which is now very famous here in Italy. Um, and this is the 21st of February. Um, the government realizes that the media realizes that uh, the virus is, is here. Uh, but basically, we have a, and this is very relevant, we have a two week period where nothing really happens, you know, the first official, um, the official um, 
you know, um, warning from the government comes on the 4th of March when the government decides to shut down schools and universities because we at that point already have 2,700 sick uh, in the north of Italy. So, you know, uh, I'm, and I want to be very transparent here, uh, myself as an entrepreneur and many other people at that moment underestimated the situation. Uh, I was among the, the ones that were uh, advocating for business as usual. We cannot shut down a country. Uh, mortality rate, blah, 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 is low. And it's just, this is just a situation where we actually don't know what we're talking about. We are not informed. You know, we don't understand the virality of, of the virus. And so I believe that these two weeks were actually the moment where we, the whole mess started. You know, this, these two weeks is where we spread throughout most of the north of the country. Um, some days later, on the 8th of March, the government, um, in, you know, operates the lockdown. And they locked down Lombardy, which is the region where I am. Uh, I'm in Milan now, which is the, has been the largest uh, epicenter in Europe. Uh, and uh, ever since the 8th of March, we've been completely locked down. And, uh, you know, shortly after Milan becomes the number one city in the world for, um, for, pandem for the pandemic, uh, we, you know, at some point surpassing uh, Wuhan itself. Um, and uh, there is, I think, uh, from this moment on, a pretty effective lockdown in Italy because we're, you know, I've seen videos, uh, Instagram stories from around the world. As my friend was sending me videos from New York and the people last week, a park full of people and people cycling and so on. And I understand that the situation is hard for everyone. Uh, but I really, I think that in Italy, we've done it right when it comes to the lockdown, because we're talking about walking down the street, you would see a desertic street with the police and the, in the, and the army, and literally no, no people, especially, I mean, in Milan, I'm talking, uh, no people whatsoever. And, and so what happened there, there's 20 days from the 8th of March to the 27th of March, we kind of managed to reach the peak, you know, to the, flatten the curve effectively, uh, because we, unfortunately, on the 27th of March, we register our highest number of deaths uh, ever, which is 969 people dead in one day. Um, and ever since, the number's been going down. And as you may know, the, the number of new contagion is, is the different kind of number because it really is really affected by the number of tests that are run. And, you know, in that period now, we issued many, many more tests. So the decrease in the contagion is started later. But in any case, you know, the curve is going down. And uh, the, the numbers today are that overall, since the beginning, Italy has had 205,000 uh, people affected by the virus, 28,000 uh, deaths, um, and over 1.9 million tampons done. Um, an interesting number is that 36% of all this is happened in Lombardy, where I, where I live. To put this in perspective now, which is crazy, Spain has has surpassed Italy with, for total contagions. They're now today on 215K. And so this shows you how the lockdown, uh, you know, the heavy lockdown in Italy has, has in somehow uh, been effective. UK, 161K. Germany, 163,000. France, 130,000. So, um, you know, this is kind of the history of what happened. And 
I want to look at it from the perspective of the measures that have been implemented, especially when it comes to macroeconomics or, or the government uh, in these areas. Um, in Italy, we've had, first of all, as, as, as the stereotype confirms, it, Italians are slow to do things and they're, they do a lot of confusion. Uh, so, so, you know, we've been very slow in providing liquidity uh, and, and supporting the population. But the first measure we've had um, was uh, uh, just, a, just a 10 billion uh, liquidity that was provided to privates and professionals and uh, uh, a tax deferral, uh, which is very relevant because in Italy we had the expiry of major tax, uh, you know, in June every year. And uh, then in a second phase, now the government has issued uh, to provide liquidity for 200, uh, 200 billion uh, in the form of bank loans that are going to be 90% guaranteed by the state. Um, for very small size inter enterprises, it's 100% guaranteed, but we're talking uh, uh, you know, to, about loans up to 25K. And for very large corporations, seven billions or more uh, revenues, uh, it's a 70% guarantee. Another very relevant thing that has been enacted is the golden power rule that allows the government to block uh, the acquisitions of strategic businesses in Italy. And personally, I find this to be very uh, relevant, you know, just, just in my own, uh, in my own uh, experience, I've been contacted by at least four different individuals in the U.S. or elsewhere who are, who are, you know, shopping for companies in Italy right now, fashion and wine and so on. And it is important that at least for the very strategic companies for our economy that, that we manage to uh, protect them. Uh, very briefly. Spain, 25, 21 billion uh, injection, mortgage moratorium, free supplies of electricity, water, and gas provided to the population. And then a uh, 100 billion maneuver has been enacted with a 80%, you know, with loans guaranteed 80% by the state. And you know, Spain, I have to say, is in a pretty bad situation where, you know, the projections, uh, if these measures are enacted uh, straight away, the projections see a, a, a loss of 3.6% of the GDP. Uh, France enacted a 45 bill and billion uh, injection and now is, is enacting the largest, I believe, maneuver in the whole of Europe with a 300 billion of bank loans. Germany, 156 billions. 90% guaranteed. So this gives you an idea of how uh, the different governments are moving. And I will go, I will, you know, touch this at the end of, of the talk, but um, we're really not supported by the European Union. Uh, this is all done. This is all done individually. There, there has been a great struggle uh, to, to, um, to cooperate in a, in a, within our union, the European Union, and you know the states are kind of finding out how they should act and how they should um, react to the situation. So this being said, um, and please interrupt me and, and, and share your opinion. I will give you my my personal vision on on the economic situation, which is of course uh, just my my personal perspective. Um, in a nutshell, it's, it's not, it's not a good situation. Um, why? I'm talking about Italy, uh, in particular, the, the key, uh, word to focus on is small and, and middle sized businesses. Um, Italy, Italy's, is company ecosystem is made 78% of uh, what we call PMA, uh, small and middle-sized businesses, making it the highest percentage in Europe 
and one of the highest percentage you know anywhere of of small size business ecosystem 45 percent of which are micro businesses you know and this is this is a weakness, but it's also the strength of Italy. Um, this is, you know, it's a typical, um, it's a typical feature of Italian entrepreneurship, small entrepreneurs, creative, fashion, food, tourism, whatever. We are not, we don't have large industries such as Germany or the US, but you know, these kind of businesses that I'm talking about, they're the heart of our nation. They're what, what create, you know, what, what, what create our economy. We're talking about uh, over 150,000 companies that account for over 4 million employees in Italy and 30%, 13% uh, of our GDP. What is worse is that uh, most of these businesses are located in Lombardy and Veneto region, that is where we've had the complete lockdown and where the situation is, you know, happening. So what, what, why am I talking about this? Because um, this crisis is very different from, from any other crisis from a macroeconomic standpoint. And as, as many people have said, it is not a liquidity crisis which is what we've had for example you know in the 2008 where we we've seen businesses losing up to 20 25 percent of their revenues uh, but it's more of a production crisis a complete shutdown of of business for two three months which is resulting in a loss of over 80 sometimes 90% of revenues for businesses. Um, I can, you know, briefly in my own experience, I, through my family and my own businesses, we're, we're in real estate, we're, we're in tourism, and I can assure you, you know, I run Airbnbs around the country, I do wedding businesses, and I can assure you the loss of revenue is, is close to 100%. So, you know what 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 this means is you have large corporations which are companies that have underlying assets which which will be strong enough uh you know to to make it and we're we're seeing we we can imagine v-shaped uh v-shaped situation or u u-shaped outcome uh or maybe w-shaped outcomes while small size business might just not make it, meaning that they will just shut down, you know, they will go bankrupt. And, you know, it's happening. It's happening now. The liquidity is being provided, but in, in many cases, there's no way that, that, it, that it's going to work. And especially in those fields that I was telling you about, in, 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 for example, in, in industry, because, you know, even if you provide liquidity, the season is lost and we're not going to have business until maybe 2021, you know, the new season. So the situation is kind of shitty. Uh, and, you know, I'm not uh, in, any, in any way an expert of macroeconomics, but we're, we're seeing, we believe we're seeing at least a two-year crisis uh, coming up. And what I've said, you know, goes for all the so-called pigs uh which are you know certain european uh, countries such as italy spain portugal and you know greece has already been through it uh, these countries are gonna are gonna surely uh struggle um you know ultimately and you know i have been pretty fast my personal experience trying also to look at the half full glass is that there's also, as you might have heard already, great opportunity for disruption, you know, innovation and rethinking uh, a lot about business. Um, also here in, in Europe and Italy. Um, I'm personally very excited, for example, about the, the privacy uh, issue because i believe that you know where we have the chinese and uh the chinese model we have the u.s model chinese model is 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 uh 
centralized government uh, ruled uh, US model is run by big tech corporations. Europe can be an example for a third model and you know can be innovative in, in providing a different way, a different vision of how to manage uh, user privacy. And uh, it's also, you know, just proven it's in my own, you know, my tech business is in blockchain and we work with brands, fashion, food, brands. Uh, we provide traceability, product connectivity. And I was surprised and how, how interesting, you know, how many opportunities came through because people have more time to sit at home and escape their busy everyday life. And, uh, and they have time to listen, you know, and companies who maybe wouldn't call us back are now working with us. So that's, that's positive. Um, so this being said, um, this is, this is the situation. I think that, uh, it's not going to go away. Uh, it's gonna, you know, it's going to be many years of, of new problems to face, but, but I think that, you know, these countries like Italy and like the Mediterranean cultures, the oldest, the most ancient cultures in the world, they've been resilient. They've surpassed hundreds of crises uh, throughout thousands of years. And so I think that they will, will find a way out and, and Europe will always be a relevant place in the world where, where we can set an example of a way of living and a, a way of especially providing a high standard of quality in, in life. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I don't know what's your, your personal, uh, we don't have a lot of time, but, but, you know, uh, anyone can reach out to me for, for a chat or if anyone here now has a personal opinion on the situation or, or can give a, the vision on a different, different region, we'd be very happy to hear it. Thanks. Hi, Marcelo, it's Eugene. I have, I have, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Just a quick question on Africa. Sorry, I mean, maybe it's, if you say it's maybe not that relevant, but how do we look at COVID in uh, Africa? You hear nothing. Um, uh, is that going to wash over us uh, at some point or what's your view? Yeah, this is a very relevant matter and uh, I'm definitely not, uh, again, I'm not an expert. I can give you an opinion and, and, and you probably have another opinion and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in knowing. But, you know, the, the most obvious thing is that a, a massive outbreak in Africa would be devastating because of the healthcare situation and, and because of the pre-existing crisis that, that is, you know, the migration crisis that has hit Africa for the last five years. Um, and, and I'm very, personally, I'm very scared. I'm very, uh, I'm very aware that it, it would be cra a crazy situation. And I'm, I'm actually so uh, surprised and relief, uh, that the situation now is not that bad yet. Um, I was on the phone yesterday with a South African friend who is in South Africa now, and he was pretty positive in some way. Um, and then what he said, which is is you know it's a positive thing i don't know if it's true is that africans are so used to facing crisis and 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 and, and pandemics and you know they've gone through ebola and, and worse things than covid that probably they will know how to cope with the situation but who knows Oh, thank you, Marcelo. Now I was kind of picking up on a question from uh, uh, Mikhail also on the chat saying, hi, what do you think about COVID in Russia? So I had the question of Africa. So it's the same actually on Mikhail's uh, point. What do you think about COVID in Russia? I mean, uh, you guys, if, if, if Mikhail, if anyone here is from Russia, I think they should answer the question because uh, it's so hard to uh, penetrate, you know, Russia is so closed when it comes to information. Uh, the only thing that I've gathered uh, personally, and, and if someone has uh, something to add, please do, is that um, 
Russia has been very careful with media. They've been very careful with protecting their national interest and in, and showcasing the existence of the virus when I think it's understood that they've been hit too. You know, uh, when 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 we, Europe was hit, they've been hit too. And and but at some point, you know, the, the numbers were very low for Russia. So the question is why you know why the numbers are so low and if it was just a kind of policy where where the russian government decided not to attract attention uh and and kind of you know hide the real i wouldn't say hide but you know be very cautious with with showcasing the situation there So is there any question or anyone would like to say something? Hey, my friend. I can't we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Is that better? It's very nice to see you. Now I can't hear you. But um if you can hear me, the the Italians are famously family oriented and uh, open and generous and warm. Can you talk to us about the sort of social situation in terms of communities coming together or not and, and how they've reacted? Yes, that is a very cool question, uh, Peter. Um, you know, if, 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 but uh, you know, Italy, as usual, is very creative. Italians are very uh, focused, you say, not in, in Italy. They they have fire uh, in their soul, so they they try to always, um, you know, try and look at the bright side. And especially in the beginning of the pandemic, we've had some very cool situations. You know, the nation was very united. We had these flash mobs every day at 6 p.m. People would go on the balcony and play music and sing together, and this became this became a national thing, you know, uh, especially in, 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 you know, more, more poor and traditional neighborhoods would be really, really felt. Uh, and it would be a moment where we would, you know, all be together and every day someone would decide a, a national, you know, traditional Italian song and we would sing it. People with the guitar, even famous musicians would be out there on the balcony. That was very cool, but of course, at some point we became we became bored of it or pretty depressed overall. So we stopped doing it. Uh, and the the family is 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 uh, is crucial. You know, a lot a lot of people at the beginning of the pandemic they 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 went back to their home town. Uh, this this was of course a problem because this was kind of how it spread in the south of Italy. But then on the other hand everyone was back in their family and they, they could go through this time, very hard time of isolation with, with the pleasure of reconnecting with family and reconnecting, you know, with these values that we lose in the everyday life. Sorry, my mic was off. So I don't want to intrude in the next session, which is starting now. So uh, I just want to thank you for connecting. And uh, I'm in the Telegram chat, or, or maybe you know me already. So happy to chat anytime you want and, and, and hopefully see you uh, in the near future. Thank you, everyone. Bye.